What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader, also known as John, coming back to you with a quick review video. I have two vintage, carded, graded G.I. Joes here for you, and they are two of the more popular ones in the line. And I am sad to say that while I love these figures, I have a lot of expenses. And I mean a lot of expenses. I've got like 25 figures uh, or more, I think. I, I've lost count. I got 25 like Polish bootlegs and Mexican bootlegs that I need to get graded at Collector Archive Services. And so sometimes I run out of money. And this is one of those times. Uh, I've got uh, a lot of grading costs. And uh, so I've decided to go ahead and sell these. They are both listed on eBay, and I've got them listed very low. Uh, the Duke has actually already got bids on it, so it's definitely selling. I assume the uh, Blowtorch will as well. But we got Duke and Blowtorch here. These are from 1984. These are the Series 3 32 back uh, G.I. Joes. These are two of the very first figures I bought years ago when I decided to get into graded action figures. I, you know, G.I. Joe was my first passion uh, before even Star Wars, really. I mean, it's about the same time, I guess, but... Uh, growing up, I really collected G.I. Joe's first and then really got into Star Wars around, uh, you know, Return of the Jedi. But, uh, you know, I had a few Empire Strikes Back figures, but most of my, uh, most of my figures were from Return of the Jedi, just given my age. But, um, G.I. Joe was at its height of its popularity when I was a kid and everybody collected them. And I, I was no exception. I had a lot of G.I. Joe's growing up. Uh, and two of my favorite figures are here in front of you. Uh, they're also two of the more expensive figures. And so I bought these ungraded on eBay. And, you know, to the extent that you guys actually watch my videos or remember any of my videos, I talked about... I, I know I talked about the Blowtorch. I don't know if I ever talked about Duke. But, um, <clears throat> you know, th when I was first starting collecting... When I first started collecting mint on card figures to get graded, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing, to be honest. And I was like, oh, sweet. You know, these, these were being sold together uh, by a seller. And, uh, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I didn't know what to look for. I didn't understand the grading process at all. And, I, you know, some would argue that I still don't, but that's a different story. Um, but, you know, these, these two obviously have some card damage on the front, which I'll show you in, uh, in more detail in a second. But I didn't understand how much it would affect the grades until I, you know, actually sent in my first batch to... Action Figure Authority, AFA. And, uh, you know, these two definitely, um, you know, have some card damage and the scores reflect that. But, you know, now that I've uh, got a little bit more experience underneath me after a few years of, of doing this, um, I never would have bought these figures, especially for the price I paid. I'm probably going to end up selling these at a loss, to be honest with you, after grading costs and the purchase costs and everything. My guess is I'll probably end up losing money on it. But nevertheless... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm picking my lower graded figures from my collection uh, to try and get some, you know, to, to liquidate them and, and uh, uh, to, just to get some more money in, in the coffers, so to speak, so I can pay for some grading costs for some Star Wars figures. So uh, these two got to go, and I assume they will sell because I, I listed them very low relative to where others have sold. So, um, I know, like I said, I know the Duke's going to sell because I've already got two bids on it, but... Uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to at least do a video on them in more detail before they leave my collection and go off into some other person's collection that, uh, will hopefully appreciate them as well. But they're awesome figures. And so let's go left to right. Let's start with Duke. Um, Duke obviously is the leader of the good guys, the G.I. Joes. And this is the Series 3. I think there was also a Series 2, uh, card back, but this is the Series 3. And uh, you can see the artwork there. Really cool, kind of traditional U.S. military gear there. What's interesting is the gun, is it looks to be different than the gun that he comes with, which I thought was interesting. But nevertheless, it's still a really awesome figure. I think there are a couple of variations for this uh, related to the sleeves. Uh, I know that the Takara version, there is one that has a lower sleeve and then one that's rolled up. And I believe the same is for the U.S., but... The figure itself is in excellent condition. I'll show you the grading scores in a second. It only did get an 80. I mean, I say only. That's still a good score. But, you know, I, I don't know what AFA saw that would not give this a near-mint score. But, you know, looking at him, uh, he looks fantastic. One of the things that does happen quite a bit is at the elbow joint, you'll see cracks uh, on the elbow joint. But that is not the case here. 
Um, this is also a swivel arm version. There's a straight arm version, I believe. Uh, other collectors who are, no are more knowledgeable than me uh, can answer that better, probably. But uh, this is the less rare of the two. Um, but you can see his gun there and then his accessories up here. Uh, he's got binoculars, uh, a helmet, as well as a backpack. And, you know, it's got the swivel arm battle grip. This was, you know, the very first G.I. Joes were called the straight arm G.I. Joes. They did not have that. And uh, you can see where there's some sticker residue up here. And that's what really brought the score down from AFA. And like I said, I probably would have never bought this and got it graded if I knew what I was doing. But I was so excited to see a Men on Card Duke that was not graded and also very cheap. And, you know, the, the starting bid price was low. I ended up paying a lot for it. But, you know, you can see the sticker residue where someone took the, the sticker off. Um, grading, uh, it's a 1984 uh, Hasbro G.I. Joe Series 3, 32 back Duke. It came back with a 75 or excellent plus near mint. I did get the archival upgraded uh, case, so it's 100% UV protected. The card got a 75 for the for the uh, sticker damage. The bubble got an 80. The figure got an 80. I don't know what... I mean, I can understand the bubble. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know enough about how they score bubbles, uh, but I, I don't know why this didn't get an 85 score. I, I mean, the only thing I can think of is there maybe it's got some sun fading, uh, and maybe the the colors are not as bright as they could be. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of, because the figure itself looks mint to me. He's always cut kind of, you know, Duke has always had kind of a yellowish tint to his skin. But for whatever reason, they gave it an 80. Uh, and here's the back of the card, so you can take a look at that. Um, so again, it's a 32 back, so it's got the 32 Joes there and some villains. Uh, you got Storm Shadow and a few of the others that I really like, Destro, Cobra Commander. Uh, and then some of the uh, original... Joes are here as well, like Flash and um, Bazooka Soldier. I think that's Grunt, maybe. I don't know. Uh, and you got Snake Eyes Commando version. So, uh, very cool. Um, and here's the foul card uh, for Conrad Hauser. There was a reconstitu reconstituted, regurgitated update uh, G.I. Joe uh, movie, the very first one, G.I. Joe. I think it's called Rise of Cobra. And then they had a follow-up version, which I, 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 a follow-up sequel, which I cannot even remember the name of. is G.I. Joe something. But it was a terrible, terrible movie. I mean, I, it was entertaining from a mindless popcorn flick, but it really did not do the G.I. Joe brand justice. And probably why, part of the reason why, anyway, that uh, the G.I. Joe franchise and brand as a whole is is wallowing in, in kind of, my, it's mired in, in basically... Uh, it's basically a dead a dead franchise. Um, you know, they just announced, and I did confirm that the figure subscription service, which I've talked about at length in other videos, uh, they've got twelve figures coming out. It's going to be the last of them. They also have a uh, three pack of Cobra female troopers, which is a recolor, and then they also have a Zartan Ninja Force coming with a motorcycle. That's going to be it for the GI Joe brand, according to the GI Joe uh, Hasbro website. So they're going to kind of stop making GI Joes after that. You know, I think those movies didn't help. I think that given the current environment with, with terrorism and uh, conflict around the world that kids don't really like to play with army figures anymore. This is not the 1950s and 60s anymore, and certainly not the 1980s when these were made. Um, and so I, th I think that just in general, kids today, they don't, you know, the whole army thing is kind of a turnoff to parents maybe. I don't know. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for G.I. Joe. So I, I don't know how this brand is going to do long term in terms of these vintage figures. But there's still a lot of collectors out there like me that love it. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't foresee the brand uh, re re resuscitating anytime soon unless something dramatic happens. But uh, So that's Duke. Uh, and then we have Blowtorch here. Uh, you can see the card work there. He's, he was one of my favorite characters or figures growing up. I love this figure. I don't know why. I just love the colors. I love... The artwork, uh, he's got this massive backpack along with uh, a face mask and helmet, just like in the artwork. And then you can see the blowtorch there is very well sculpted. The colors are excellent on him. Uh, just an awesome figure. The uh, You can see the, the wire coming off of the blowtorch that plugs into this pack here, which then plugs into... Oh, I'm sorry, that, that plugs into the backpack. I don't know what that is for. I think that's for the, for the uh, face mask, actually. You can see there in the artwork. But... Um, but it was an awesome figure. I loved it growing up. This also has a swivel arm battle grip, obviously. And here's the damage on this one. This this card damage is, is very significant. You can see where the some moron tried to rip the the sticker off, and it did a lot of card damage, and that destroyed the score for AFA. 
Um, it got an overall 70, excellent plus. The bubble got an 80, figure got an 85 though, uh, and it's got the archival upgraded case, but because of that 70, that's the highest it's going to get for an overall score. So it was a really, really uh, disappointing score, but I should have known that, you know, if I had, if I understood the grading process, I would have known that this would not have gotten a good score just because of that. I probably wouldn't have bought it, but, uh, you know, the rest of the card is flat and ding free and really nice. But, you know, if that, if, if, it, if the person who had this before me had just left the, uh, the, the sticker on there, this would be an overall 80 easily and it would stay in my collection. But, uh, you know, I, I hate to get rid of it, but I got I got to get some money. Um, here's the back. It's basically the same back as uh, as the Duke. Uh, this is Timothy Hanaran. Oh, Timothy, why do you like to play with fire so much? Fire, fire, fire. Um, and then there's the uh, the foul card. So anyway, uh, man, you can see. Look at that foul card. I mean, that foul card is nice and straight. It's just a shame that he put, whoever owned it before me pulled the pulled the sticker off. But um, it is what it is, and uh, so these figures are probably going to be out of my collection within the week, but I thought I'd do a kind of a salute to them, a, a farewell video to them, uh, before I send them off to a better home. And uh, that's really all I had. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Oh, I do have another Black Friday purchase from Facebook that should be coming hopefully next week. And which is which is also part of the reason why I'm selling some of this stuff. I've got like 15 or 18 auctions going right now. I'm hopefully a lot of this stuff will sell to pay for my purchases. But uh, I'm riding my credit card fast and loose right now, folks. Like a typical American, I am I'm just riding my debt right now. I, I've got a credit card balance that will blow your mind. So I've got I got to pay for some of this stuff. But I do have an awesome awesome vintage Star Wars figure. That is going to hopefully blow your mind. It's a uh, a fairly new grading style from Collector Archive Services that I have been taking advantage of with some of my recent submissions. But this one is already graded. It's got an awesome grade, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't pass it up at the price it was it was at. Uh, it was a Black Friday sale, and I had been watching it before, but he dropped it way low, and I decided to buy it. So that's coming hopefully next week, and so we'll take a look at that whenever it gets here. But in the meantime, I'm going to hunker down and get some of this stuff sold and packed and shipped and uh, pay down some of my expenses. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be back soon.